Olá, meus amigos, novamente estou aqui para apresentar mais uma parte desse vídeo fantástico que eu tenho apresentado nos últimos tempos. A proposta do canal não é bem mostrar esse tipo de assunto, porém o que eu vejo? Eu vejo que é muito importante a gente também explanar alguns assuntos e é um pouco diferenciado para que as pessoas possam também entender um pouquinho mais sobre como é que funciona a materialidade e a existência humana. Então essa é a proposta maior do canal, tá? Eu agradeço a todos vocês, espero que vocês façam um bom proveito de toda a matéria que será explanada daqui para frente, tá? Muito obrigado. The Pythagorean philosopher Plato hinted enigmatically that there was a golden key that unified all of the mysteries of the universe. It is this golden key that we will return to time and again throughout our exploration. The golden key is the intelligence of the Logos, the source of the primordial Om. One could say that it is the mind of God With our limited senses, we are observing only the outer manifestation of the hidden mechanics of self-similarity. The source of this divine symmetry is the greatest mystery of our existence. Many of history's monumental thinkers such as Pythagoras, Kepler, Leonardo da Vinci, Tesla, and Einstein have come to the threshold of the mystery. Einstein said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. He to whom this emotion is a stranger, who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead. His eyes are closed. We are in the position of a little child entering a huge library filled with books in many different languages. The child knows someone must have written those books. It does not know how. It does not understand the languages in which they are written. The child dimly suspects a mysterious order in the arrangement of the books, but doesn't know what it is. That, it seems to me, is the attitude of even the most intelligent human being toward God. We see a universe marvelously arranged and obeying certain laws. Our limited minds cannot grasp the mysterious force that moves the constellations. Every scientist who looks deeply into the universe and every mystic who looks deeply within the self eventually comes face to face with the same thing. The primordial spiral A thousand years before the creation of the ancient observatory at Stonehenge, the spiral was a predominant symbol on Earth. Ancient spirals can be found in all parts of the globe. Thousands of ancient spirals such as these can be found all over Europe, North America and New Mexico, Utah, Australia, China, Russia, virtually every indigenous culture on Earth. The ancient spirals symbolize growth, expansion, and cosmic energy embodied within the sun and the heavens. The spiral form is mirroring the macrocosm of the unfolding universe itself. In native traditions, the spiral was the energetic source, the primordial mother. The Neolithic spirals at Newgrange, Ireland date back 5,000 years 
They are 500 years older than the Great Pyramid of Giza, and they are just as enigmatic to modern observers. The spiral goes back to a time in history when humans were more connected to the Earth, to the cycles and spirals of nature, a time when humans were less identified with thoughts. The spiral is what we perceive to be the torque of the universe. Prana, or creative force, swirls Akasha into a continuum of solid forms. Found at all levels between the macrocosm and the microcosm, from spiral galaxies to weather systems, to the water in your bathtub, to your DNA, to the direct experience of your own energy. The primordial spiral is not an idea, but rather that which makes all conditions and ideas possible. Various types of spirals and helices are found throughout the natural world. Snails. Sea coral. Spider webs. Fossils. Seahorses' tails. And shells. Many spirals appearing in nature are observable as logarithmic spirals or growth spirals. As you move out from the center, the spiral sections get exponentially larger, like Indra's net of jewels. Logarithmic spirals are self-similar or holographic such that the characteristics of every part are reflected in the whole. 2400 years ago in ancient Greece, Plato considered continuous geometric proportion to be the most profound cosmic bond. The golden ratio or divine proportion was nature's greatest secret. The golden ratio can be expressed as the ratio of A plus B to A is the same as the ratio of A to B. To Plato, the world soul binds together into one harmonic resonance. The same pentagonal pattern that exists in a starfish or in a slice of okra can be seen in the path of the planet Venus, traced in the night sky over an eight-year period. The intelligible world of forms above and the visible world of material objects below through this principle of geometric self-similarity. From the self-similar spiral patterns of the Romanesco broccoli to the arms of galaxies, logarithmic spirals are a ubiquitous and archetypal pattern. Our own Milky Way galaxy has several spiral arms which are logarithmic spirals with a pitch of about 12 degrees. The greater the pitch of the spiral, the tighter the turns. When you observe a plant growing in time-lapse video, you witness it dancing with the spiral of life.
A golden spiral is a logarithmic spiral that grows outward by a factor of the golden ratio. The golden ratio is a special mathematical relationship that pops up over and over in nature. The pattern that is observable follows what is called the Fibonacci series or Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci series unfolds such that each number is the sum of the previous two numbers. The German mathematician and astronomer Kepler discovered that self-similar spiral patterns are observable in the way leaves are arranged on stems of plants or in the floret and petal arrangements of flowers. Leonardo da Vinci observed that the spacing of leaves was often in spiral patterns. These patterns are called phyllotaxis patterns or leaf arrangement patterns. Phyllotaxis arrangements can be seen in self-organizing DNA nucleotides. and in everything from the family trees of reproducing rabbits to pine cones, cacti, to snowflakes and in simple organisms such as diatoms. Diatoms are one of the most common types of phytoplankton, single-celled organisms that provide food for countless species throughout the food chain. How much math do you need to know to be a sunflower or a bee? Nature doesn't consult the physics department to grow broccoli. The structuring in nature happens automatically. Scientists in the field of nanotechnology use the term self-assembly to describe the way complexes are formed, such as in the initial hexagonal phase of DNA formation. In nanotechnology engineering, carbon nanotubes are comprised of a similar arrangement of materials. Nature does this type of geometry over and over, effortlessly, automatically, without a calculator. Nature is precise and extremely efficient. According to the famous architect and author Buckminster Fuller, these patterns are a function of time space. DNA and honeycomb are the shape that they are for the same reason a bubble is round. It is the most efficient shape requiring the least amount of energy. Space itself has shape and allows only certain configurations for matter, always defaulting to what is most efficient. These patterns are the strongest and most efficient way to build architectural structures such as geodesic domes. Logarithmic spiral patterns allow plants maximum exposure to insects for pollination. Maximum exposure to sunlight and rain and allow them to efficiently spiral water towards their roots. Birds of prey use the logarithmic spiral pattern to stock their next meal. Flying in a spiral is the most efficient way to hunt. One's ability to see the spiral of life dancing akasha into material form is related to one's ability to see beauty and symmetry in nature. Poet William Blake said, The vegetative universe opens like a flower from the earth's center, in which is eternity. It expands from stars to the mundane shell, and there it meets eternity again, both within and without.
Bem, pessoal, eu acredito que vocês estejam gostando da matéria que está sendo exposta. Por isso é muito importante que vocês possam compartilhar esse material, que eu acredito que seja bastante informativo para que as pessoas tenham uma consciência um pouquinho maior de como funciona toda a existência. Imaginar e pensar um pouquinho mais sobre o assunto, tá? Como eu creio que vocês estejam cientes de que a proposta do canal é apenas trazer informações. De qualquer forma, eu agradeço e vamos aguardar agora a parte quarta de, desse fantástico vídeo. Thank <music> you.